Hello, you are watching Gaming Marketing Course, where you will learn how to get your brands into gaming marketing. Today, we're going to talk about the future of live streaming for marketers, how, how you should prepare for the trends in live streaming in the future. My name is Victoria Wojcik and I was a streamer myself once. Now I'm a co-founder of Instreamly, a platform that helps brands tap into gaming potential via streamers. We have helped over 150 brands worldwide do that already, and I'm happy to share all the knowledge that we learned through it. So let's go and make sure to also check our other episodes of the gaming marketing course. When I started streaming in 2016, I thought to myself, oh, there are so many big and good streamers. I will never get popular enough. Like those days are gone. I will never cut through the noise. And then you have Valkyrie. She started streaming in 2015 and she's right now the most popular female streamer worldwide. She obviously put in a lot, a lot of hours and effort into streaming, which I didn't do. And people sometimes ask me, is it worth to become a streamer today? In 2016, I was wrong. If I would be right today, well, let's see what the future of live streaming brings. And more importantly, how can brands prepare for the streamers of tomorrow. Let's take a look into the future of live streaming from the point of view of content, platforms, monetization, and not and technology. Hi, I'm Victoria. Uh, my companies have helped over 70,000 streamers work with over 150 brands like Netflix, Samsung, or PlayStation. We have also helped over 30 esports organizations like G2 Esports or Mad Lions work with their own streamers. We just help them automate their own work. And I'll be your guide today into the world of live streaming. Let's start with content. Because, you know, live streaming is live streamed content. In 2021, over 50 million of streamers have produced over 650 million hours of content on Western platforms only. So I'm talking Twitch, YouTube and Facebook. And they have done it in 50,000 categories. And you could say, oh, live streaming is primarily gaming content. But it's not true. Categories by hours watched on Twitch in 2021. The first one is just chatting. From 2 to 15, it's games. And then you have slots and sports and art. All in the top 32. Just chatting takes 12% of all hours watched. And slots take just 1.14% of all hours watched. Twitch is banning gambling on Twitch, so these numbers will be probably a bit lower in the future. But still, you can say that 12%, one in 10 minutes watched on Twitch was just people chatting and not playing games. Even though these were the same people who then watched the same streamer play games and you can take a step back and you will see that live streaming as another place for content evolution. So first there was TV with content created centrally by one person and other people could, you know, watch it passively. Then the revolution came with VOD or created VOD by users and people could watch anytime they want, whatever they want, and also create the content for other people. And I believe that live streaming is the next step of content creation and content distribution. It will not kill VOD the same way as VOD did not kill TV, but more and more people will look into it as a viable content form to watch and to create. And in the same way as in VOD, we will see more categories. What is happening on Twitch right now is not without a reason. You can go right now to YouTube and watch carpet cleaning, gaming, beauty tutorials, or daily vlogs, all kinds of content. And I think this will happen with live streaming also. And it will be just another form of creating and, you know, watching things. I think the future is, as I said, live streaming will be popular for every niche. 
and there will be a stream and a streamer for every niche. This will be even stronger because live streaming is about the interaction and the relationship between the streamer and the chat. And this allows to respond more quicker to viewers' needs, means more bolder and more just down into the rabbit hole content than VOD. And it also means that in the future, we'll get more streamer teams. Life is all about interaction and having a team of people with similar interests and viewership and interacting with them can be beneficial. We are seeing teams all around the world from top creators like OTK or Offline TV to original ones like Xayo Industries to teams of small streamers that together help each other out and make their content better. We will see more niches in content and we will see more streamer teams for more of those niches. And more streamers contracted into esports organizations and content organizations. So they are a part of a machine that's there for entertainment. Next thing, streamers are creators. They do social media, communities, they create YouTube videos, have their Instagrams, TikToks, newsletters. You cannot only just stream on Twitch and expect to grow huge from nothing. You do all the other things, just like any other internet creator. And in the future, I think creators will become streamers. Live streaming is the best way to deeply interact with your fans and show your human side. You cannot be perfect, you cannot be scripted. And people, especially those who grow up with the craze of perfect image on social media, really like the authenticity that comes with it. And it's already happening. Brandon Yuri started streaming in 2018. Uh, he's the Panic at the Disco uh, vocalist. And he used to take his streaming setup to every concert tour. K-pop idols, celebrities, and basically anyone with Instagram following uses live to get in touch with the audience. Every creator is showing their human side on life and it will be more and more popular. The next thing that will get more popular is e-commerce live streaming, the internet version of teleshopping. It's extremely popular in China right now and it basically means using live streaming to show products and sell them to viewers. And it doesn't mean that those people who are streaming games will be streaming backpacks and purses. No, there will be new creators and they are already happening. Go to Facebook and try to find some small boutiques. They are already doing it. And they will be selling those things to viewers. So why do people buy via live streaming? First of all, choosing something from thousands of pieces of clothing on an e-commerce site is a huge burden. You get overwhelmed so quickly. And via live stream, there's just a limited number of items that you have to look at for quite a bit of time. And it's easier to make a choice. You either like a thing or not. Second thing, seeing an item live gives realistic expectations and viewers can ask questions and see the answers immediately. Realistic expectations because we all know that all the clothing photos on e-commerce sites are photoshopped. The models are using safety pins to make the clothing fit the best. And you never know what you will actually get. When you see it live, you can see how the fabric moves, how it looks like on a maybe more normal, casual person. And also the third thing, and this one is really, really important. And this is what makes the best live e-commerce sellers the best compared to others is the sellers make a show out of it and make the buying fun. So much fun that the biggest ones are getting big, big money out of it. This is a record holder. So China's so-called lipstick king sold an astonishing 1.7 billion of goods in just 12 hours, 12 hour stream. And this is it. This is the power that e-commerce live streaming holds. Okay, we have content, but what about the platforms that host it? I will focus on most popular Western platforms for now. And Twitch represents right now 71% of total streaming market hours worth. 
and around 90-85% of total hours streamed compared to Facebook and YouTube. And YouTube is gaining more and more traction and even though they are not growing as good as they were, uh, Facebook grew in the last year tremendously and is doing a great job getting into live streaming. But my broad prediction is YouTube will quickly, quickly is relative, chase Twitch. And let me show you why. Here is a comparison for Twitch and YouTube for major viewer facing features. Twitch has no discoverability. You cannot search for videos to rewatch them after the live is gone. You are live for four hours and then you are gone from discovery. You either are live or viewers cannot find you. And on YouTube, the video just stays there and is as watchable as any other kind of video. So what streamers do, they move viewers from Twitch to other platforms, to their YouTube, to their TikTok, to their Twitter. They have to find a way to connect with the viewers somewhere else than on Twitch. YouTube is also better suited for other type of content than gaming. Twitch is known as the gaming platform. And even though gaming is getting more and more popular, Twitch will need to fight for different kinds of creators. And I think they will be winning in gaming category for a long time. But for those creators who do beauty, car, dog, or any other kind of content that are already on YouTube and popular on YouTube, there is no reason for them to switch to a platform that doesn't give them discoverability and they would have to bring their viewership from one platform to the other if they can then do it just on YouTube and have the benefits of, you know, authenticity, connecting with the viewers there. This is how they do it. So once YouTube introduces the same features as Twitch and they are on a good run to doing that, they are not only better positioned for non-gaming streamers, but sometimes for gaming streamers as well, especially if you are deciding whether to start streaming on Twitch or on YouTube. So, you know, YouTube makes content production pipelines shorten for them and is sometimes as effective as Twitch when it comes to live viewership. The war between Twitch and YouTube means that we'll likely not have a monopoly. And this is very good because as the internet grows to be more decentralized, hat tip to any web free enthusiasts, we'll also see more niche platforms and more places for different kinds of streamers. Simply, if we say that all content creators will become streamers in some way, more and more of them would like to cater to their niche on special ed platforms. And we will see niche platforms. Here are some examples. Altar was a platform they recently closed that focused on mental health of creators. No more too big grinds for being popular. Make it chill and find viewers who appreciate it. Then there is Teta and DLive. There are platforms that let you earn cryptocurrency while you are watching and while you are streaming. And Boothouse is a place online to watch and listen to live DJ video sets. This is live streaming. There are also platforms that are regional or honorable mentions in the category of platforms. For example, India is very heavy in terms of regional platforms. It's one of the fastest growing economies and Twitch is not the most popular live streaming platform there. YouTube is, and it's chased by the local platforms like Loco and Buya. Huya is the most popular gaming streaming platform in China. It's comparable to Twitch in how it works, how it looks. But they will not stay in China only, probably. They are contracting streamers and esports players to stream on Huya to Chinese and not only Chinese viewers. And I will not be surprised if they make the move, their move outside of China. And Africa TV has one third of Facebook hours watched, is the South Korea live streaming platform. There are also other honorable mentions. TikTok and their live streaming, they recently introduced a software for your PC to be able to stream to TikTok. So gameplay streaming finally got more easy. Caffeine focused on high quality live stream content. Trovo, they are expanding pretty fast. I think they grew 400% in the past year. Acquiring streamers, offering them incentives to stream on the platform, they basically want to become a second Twitch. And there's, for example, Mildom, a platform that's 
popular and active only in Japan. And I think all of those platforms will compete for streamers and not only for the big streamers. They are already doing it. YouTube pays big contracts to get top Twitch stars to stream on YouTube. For example, Team the Tapman, Valkyrie, Courage, they all stream on YouTube. There is also live streaming on Instagram, TikTok, etc. Up until now, Twitch had an exclusivity clause that did not allow you to stream on any other platform than on Twitch if you wanted to earn from ads on Twitch. They got it down. Now everyone can stream to, for example, YouTube and to Twitch, just not at the same time. But for example, you can stream to Twitch and to TikTok at the same time. And I think those kinds of clauses that do not allow you to stream at the same time to different places will be that in the future. You need this content. Platforms rely on those content creators and streamers will want to maximize their content distribution to multiple platforms. So the same way they do with any other content platform, social media, they are posting the same things to YouTube shirts, TikTok and to Instagram reels. And this is totally normal. So why the exclusivity clauses on live streaming at the same time? Competition will be more fierce in the future and hopefully not only for the big streamers. Let's move on to monetization. Here is a very good graph made by Chinese Characteristics, a newsletter, uh, showing whether you can see live streaming as a product or as a distribution channel. Those on the right are mostly live streaming e-commerce. Those on the left focus on live streaming as a content generation, as a content to consume. When it comes to monetization, there are also two very different ways of doing it. Twitch and Huya, even though they are very similar and they have huge viewership mostly in gaming, are the exact opposite when it comes to revenue sources. They have similar revenue, but are inverted when it comes to revenue sources. So one is focused on advertising and the other on virtual goods, like subscriptions, gifts, donations, anything that comes directly from the viewer's pockets. This means that in the future, both of those platforms have, on one hand, more opportunities to monetize via advertising and on the other, through virtual goods. And those two models, if you monetize by putting in more ads or if you monetize by taking more money out of the viewer's pockets, will fight. They can, of course, exist together. But for sure, this is something that can be explored by both of them because in the end, both have similar possibilities. The features are there for both cases. They just have to go for the market even more. Either way, there is a third option for streamers because relying to have all your income on just one platform is unwise. The platform can ban you at any time they want and you don't have access to your audience. You don't have access to money over a day. So streamers are using more decentralized options for monetization, both when it comes to revenue for, from sponsors and revenue from viewers. And one example is, you know, streamers are using Patreon instead of Twitch subs. It, they do it just because it's a better revenue split for them than what Twitch offers. And I think more and more streamers in the future will search for more decentralized sources of income. They are already doing it bit by bit and it will only get more and more distributed into different kinds of ways of doing that. This is also important because 95% of Twitch streamers in April 2022 had less than 11 average viewers and only 0.3% had more than 251 viewers. It means that Twitch viewership is built on thousands, thousands, millions of small streamers with very, very small audiences. Most of them aren't even affiliate. They cannot earn from ads, but they have engaged fans and untapped potential. 
micro-influencers are already the trend in influencer marketing in other industries. And I think live streaming will follow. More brands will be looking at, to work with niche small streamers with engaged fans. And the numbers speak for themselves. Those engaged fans really care about having the streamer be supported. 81% of them is showing me is says that showing support for creators is crucial to the live streaming experience. 64% of them are more likely to consider a brand that supports their favorite streamers. And 55% are simply proud when they see a streamer they like get sponsored. So brands are searching for ways to work with those small, medium creators and position themselves as a community supporter, not an intruder by building just trust with the target audience. They are already doing it. We see brands choose to sponsor 2000 micro streamers, micro and medium streamers, instead of chasing celebrities. We have worked with over, over 150 brands. And I'm not even showing you this because it's my work, my platform. This is what we do in Instreamly. We are not the only one who does it, though I think we are the best. But I think brands working with micro streamers and untapping working with, di with them directly will be the future. And those brands will also demand more than just a logo on stream. The time when live streaming was so new that the brands did not know how to do it, how to measure it, and just wanted to be in gaming any sort of way, overpaying for a logo on stream with no statistics are long gone. All the brands will say check. They will demand stats, they will demand more conversion and creativity. And this is happening right now or happening sooner than later. And I am really happy about it because the better quality we get in terms of what the brands expect from streamers, from advertising within live streaming, the better experience for viewers. And in the long term, the healthier ecosystem. And the last thing without which live streaming cannot exist is technology. This is an interesting example of Code Miko. She's a V streamer. She streams as her 3D avatar. And she says that she cannot drink water during her whole stream because she's streaming in a mocap suit. And it means that every time she wants to go pee, it takes her 10 minutes and she's losing thousands and thousands of viewers at the time. And she's doing it for a reason, even though it's, you know, a big commitment not to pee for hours and hours a day when streaming, because she's doing something unique. And I think V streamers will also be very, very important for the future of live streaming. Iron Mouse became the third all time most subscribed so paying subscribers, people paying at least $5 a month to subscribe, Twitch channel. And becoming a V-streamer, streaming as an avatar, is just not about the fancy tech. It's very important. Code Miko is amazing at it. But it's also about the personality, about the entertainment you create with your avatar, with this creation. You can be more free with who you represent this way. I think V-streamers, are becoming more and more popular and I think they will be more in the future. I also think in the future, you know, interaction will be it. You know, this is what live streaming is about, being able to chat with the streamer, seeing how something unrolls live. And I think both brands, streamers and viewers will want more interaction with the streamers and the game with what happens in the stream, what happens in the chat. This is why also viewers on Twitch sometimes hate pre-rolls and mid-rolls ads that interrupt the viewing experience and throw them off from the immersion. So I think the now and future of live streaming means interaction. You will see the, this either as, you know, uh, stream changers, stream loads is a very good example. They have cards that viewers can play for, for a fee or points that they acquire when watching the stream. And it can be a challenge for a streamer. It can change the voice of a streamer. 
makes you know the experience between the viewer and the streamer more interesting there are games simple example choice chamber that connects with the twitch account of the streamer and viewers can vote on chat whether they want to help the streamer or make it a bit harder to you know play they can give them a sword make them tiny have more and less health etc games that in that make the live streaming interesting and more interactive will be the future and advertising for example we did a campaign uh, that uh, reacted to what happens in the streamed game so a monster appeared when a streamer had low health in fortnite and they made fun of the streamer and said hey you should eat a yogurt to be better there is also things like stream break when the streamer has to go pee like code miko did there is an advertiser sponsored break uh, with a mini game that viewers can play from within the chat or from just the screen of the live stream all in all interaction is what drives live streaming and you will see more and more things in the future around it and the next thing you know the future is mobile it's always mobile like anything you do the future is mobile and it always will be 35 percent of twitch users come from mobile 70 percent of youtube watch time comes from mobile devices this is the easiest way to stream erl so in real life streaming from outside of your home walking around the city you do it from mobile future of live streaming is mobile any way you look at it okay so let's sum it up here are the key trends you should think about when thinking about the future of live streaming and most of them will be true for any kind of content creation whether it's live streaming youtube newsletters first of all it's niches more niche content more niche platforms more streamers more micro streamers and brands willing to work with those micro streamers catering to different kinds of niches we'll just see just bigger decentralization bigger number of different kinds of things that people stream and different kinds of viewers this is amazing the next thing i think the future of live streaming lays on personality more streamers and more technology means that you will need to stand out more and making sure the personality of the streamer is appealing to the viewers will be just like a more bigger challenge and this is also all right this makes sure that the best content creators will stay on top the future of live streaming is also big and universal creators become streamers streamers are creators on different platforms and every kind of content will be streamed live and it's gonna be e-commerce it's gonna be about interactions gonna be about platforms live streaming will be big and it will be universal so if somebody asked me like summing it up is it worth to become a streamer today i'd say yes but be ready for a grind it's not gonna be easy it's not gonna be oh i can just stream any kind of game and people will watch me those days are far far gone and they were gone in 2016. so how can brands prepare for the streamers of tomorrow well it's pretty simple be where the streamers are and make sure you are supporting them in their work and you are not an intruder for what they do what they love to do and what the viewers like to watch so this was the last episode of gaming marketing course so make sure you have watched all the other all the other episodes and if you want to test your knowledge and have a proof that you know some things about gaming marketing make sure you head up to our landing page there is a link in the description down below with a certificate you can take a test and get a certificate that you know some things about gaming so uh, if you want to you know download those slides the links are also uh, below if you like this and the whole gaming marketing course make sure to share it online 
with your friends, with your colleagues. Uh, it really helps us out. And I'm not telling, talking us as extremely, it also helps us as extremely, but I'm talking helps us out as gamers, because the more people learn about doing good gaming marketing, the better ads we get. And it's more fun to watch because we've been experiencing some very not so good things for the past couple of years. And I'm on my, you know, personal crusade to just make it a bit better. And if you want to do gaming in a good way, uh, you can do it with Instreamly. Uh, we've been doing it in 12 countries with 70,000 streamers. We made 200,000 collaboration deals between brands and streamers possible. So if you want to go into gaming via those live streaming creators in a way them and their viewers appreciate, well, feel free to contact me or go to our website, use the contact form and if you want to talk about anything else, my contact is there. Let's talk. Thank you very much and see you in maybe any other content that we do.